I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with Bina Deigler, the costume designer for Tar, about a conductor who faces allegations of misconduct. Uh, now, Lydia Tar is a larger than life character, to say the least. Uh, what did you think of her when you read the script? Um, I thought that she is a very complex character, that there are a lot of different point of views. And obviously, I saw her always in context of the whole script, like the whole story. And I think what is interesting about um, Ta, the movie, is that um, somehow there are a lot of questions asked, but there are also different point of views to get the answer and I don't think that we ever know what is really the um, true answer. So her character, yeah, can be seen like a really depreta, but she can also be seen as somebody perhaps completely misunderstood. Or also the scenes are very open to different kind of interpretations, in my opinion. And uh, how do you go about uh, designing for a character uh, that is open to interpretation, uh, you know, designing what their wardrobe is and, and, and what their look should be? Well, it makes it very interesting because Somehow I tried to be ambiguous, but on the other side, I also, and I think that is what, what at the end state, it's a very subtle and steady costume design. It is very um, straightforward in, in, in the, for the different kind of scenes. And it's not distracting from Kate's interpretation. And that was very important for me. Uh, and how much input did uh, Kate Blanchett have uh, in deciding Tar's wardrobe? Because obviously she has to embody this character throughout the film. Um, it is definitely a work process between us and very much based on an amazing script. So I think that we both um, had a lot of questions for Todd Field and um, we really tried to capture what his intention were and where he wanted to go with the character. And then myself, I tried to really get the right input, um, what Kate wanted to do, where she was going and where her emotions were for each scene. And so I somehow I constructed um, a bigger closet and then we worked um, very, very much together what is the right thing for each scene. And there were a lot of things made for her just to get the best textures, the right material, the right colors um, for her wardrobe. And how much custom work was was there done for the, uh, you know, compared to what was sourced? Um, quite a lot, really a lot. Like there was like a base that was all made, but it it didn't mean that we used everything because as like I built a bigger wardrobe that was needed because we somehow needed the freedom to develop the character also meanwhile we were shooting. Luckily, it, at the beginning, it was for us a shock then we, when we realized we will start with all the conducting um, scenes because there were a lot of like major and important scenes for us to start with the wardrobe and of course for Kate to start to conduct is very difficult but on the other side 
we also had a very good base and we knew where we were going. And um, after that, then there came a lot of emotional scenes and so that we could then um, play around it, um, around these conducting scenes that like somehow created the tempo of the whole movie and the tempo also of my costume design. And I like to use the word tempo because it has so much to do with with the music world. I think that the whole um, creative um, team got so much involved in the movie because we started with the conducting scenes. We were so impregnant by all the like music that we heard during two weeks um, that that helped us then to move on um and i know that like in my design there were a lot of things that at the end um i di didn't even use but it was important that we had them to make the right choices uh and for uh you know when she's conducting the orchestra it's very physical uh, uh action for her uh did you know were there accommodations or alterations made for her movement yeah, definitely, um, because she needs like all the um, movement for her arms, but on the other side, she also needs a big support for her core. So like we made these special power genes um, for her and um, also the, the tail coat that she wears at the end was obviously a tail coat specially made to conduct. And I was very lucky because I had a tailor um, in Babelsberg studio who is a woman who has a lot of experience and, and she knew how to how to make a special tail coat for conductors. And so they were like, yeah, it's supposed to be a special thing how to cut and then like how to to put some elastic in so that it doesn't move in the action. Uh, and, and, you know, there, there's not a lot of bold color in the film. Uh, it's very subtle and muted uh, uh, tones. Uh, tell me about developing that color palette. Uh, you know, were you working a lot with the, uh, you know, art department and, and you know, what was that collaboration and, and those decisions like? I think for me, the colors, it, they really came a lot of, um, we were shooting in autumn and, um the sky over Berlin is so particular gray in autumn. And I knew that that was for us somehow an advantage. And it was also an inspiration. I mean, I think that is why um, Wim Menders made the movie called um, Der Himmel über Berlin. Because the sky of Berlin is really sometimes very special in all his gray shadows. And and somehow she, she is a person who lives in Berlin and Berlin was a huge inspiration for me as a city and as the background of our movie. And um, so somehow that helped me to get into all these gray shadows and, and use these tones of, of this autumn sky in Berlin. Uh, and you know, Tar is also a character who has traveled the world uh, beyond Berlin. Uh, how much did that, if at all, that global uh, nature of this character uh, kind of inform her costumes and and way you dressed her? Well, for me, it was like a, at the beginning when I read the script, it was like a learning process because thought had scenes very specific of about very specific locations in New York, like the Juilliards. Um, and so I had to learn about it because I visited, um, of course I know New York, but I did I haven't been before in the Juilliards. So there were a lot of like locations I had to look up and I had to ask him and what is it and, and how does it look? Because yeah, that's the interesting part to work with Todd is so specific about a lot of things. And, and so somehow also there um, was a big research involved. And then 
I somehow made a mood board around of this research and found out if I went in the right direction um, to reflect all this in the wardrobe. And uh, yeah, as she starts to uh, unravel emotionally in the film and and things start to uh, fall apart uh, in, in her career, uh, yeah, did her costuming change? Did you know? Did that affect the 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 style? Did you want that reflected in her wardrobe? Yeah, it, that was also something like why I like to to build a bigger like wardrobe closet for the actors because it's all things that she had obviously before, but the things that happens to everybody to us when we have days where we don't feel so well. Like we don't dress up so much or we don't combine our wardrobe as well. We you just reflect it. You can see it and you give this feeling. And so at the beginning, obviously, when you see her, she's in such a power position and she is so convinced that everything will go well and she's so thrilled about um the conducting of the fifth symphony. So that there you see her always very much put together in her great custom made suits but then she loses it slowly so her combinations are not as well done the 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 pants perhaps she choose are a little bit too big it's like it gets more sloppy and she takes less attention how she is dressed and i think that helps also her her interpretation to show how she loses her her power and and her connection to the rest of the world or to the real world uh, and there are characters uh you know beyond tar who are in her orbit who are very important to the story obviously uh, like her her wife sharon uh is her partner in life and in music uh you know and sometimes they have a similar look but you know not always the same like how, how did you approach Sharon, the Sharon's character played by Nina Haas. Um, yeah, Sharon also was a very um, interesting character for me because at the beginning, I heard her like a little bit in another style um, that was before our all our rehearsals. I had like more patterns, and then I realized that it's not right, and I went back to more more subtle. But she is, yes, more female. But again, also with a lot of designer clothes, um, she wears Yamamoto and she wears more skirts. But I also wanted with her water to show that she's also in a very powerful position to be the first violinist in an orchestra. Um, that's a very, very important position. And she gave Kate... Ta, Lydia Ta, the access to the Philharmonie in in Germany. So they are a power couple. And that is what I wanted to show. And she's very intelligent also. She for me, she is the one who, you know, gives the home. They have this amazing designer loft. I think that she's also very much in art. And um so she also had to look really powerful and that she dresses also up to go to work because she knows where she goes and what her position is. And uh, another uh, a really uh, interesting character in the film is Olga, uh, who uh, entices Tar. Uh, she's a younger character. She has a bold personality of her own. Uh, how do you want to express her through costumes? Well, I think with her, we made like the biggest change because obviously um, she looks very different. Um, she's blonde in real life. And and so for her, it was her first acting role. And I think it helped her to address better this new um, challenge to be an actress. And with her change of the hair color and also a little bit the change of how she dresses. You know, I, I tried to explain her 
how the young women would dress in in Berlin and and what it means to live like in Friedrichshain or wherever she would live. And um, so in her wardrobe, there is like the moments when she knows she goes to the audition and has like to be more more conservative. And then the moments when she is on herself and, and can wear her leather jacket. And then obviously she had like the, the um, green boots that are somehow significant um, for the movie um, to tell the story. And that was also like important for me to find the green, like to find the boots and then build around these boots, the rest of the costumes. Um, and and they, they, were, they were also a lot of vintage clothes involved, not only for, for Olga's character, like everybody had some like iconic vintage pieces on so it was a it was a big mixture between designers and custom made and vintage pieces um and you know this is a contemporary film and you've worked uh in period film as well um and tv uh how challenging is contemporary film compared to uh when you're working on uh, a period piece I find, I find contemporary movies a big challenge because in a period movie, it is much more about um, my creative vision, my knowledge about period that is most often more than the other people. So like I really know about the period that I have to dress and um in contemporary movies, it's like that everybody gets stressed. So everybody has like an opinion and it's very difficult to make them to understand that we are dressing a character. We are dressing somebody who is described in a script and has a lot of emotions and that I have to get all this somehow on the screen. And, and, and so to find the right material, the right texture, um, and on top make it interesting, but also not too interesting so it doesn't take too much attention. I think it, the, there's a very, very slim line to get that right, in my opinion. So for me, I think it's contemporary movies when I see um, a contemporary movie and I just think oh wow that's a good costume design I know how much they struggled and how much they had to try to make it right that gets there goes a lot of work in it well I want to uh congratulate you on your work on tar um and the success the film has had all the recognition the film is getting um and thank you so much for talking with me about it well, thank you for having me and yeah, thank you. Wonderful to talk to you.